If we want a smarter, more resilient and cost-effective grid, we can't keep relying on yesterday's hardware. That's where substation virtualization comes in, shifting critical grid functions from physical devices into software. But what does this mean in practice for utilities and how do you get there without disrupting the grid? This is Powering the Future, a podcast series brought to you by Smart Grid Forums. One planet, one power grid. Joining us today is Anthony Burrell, Managing Director at Stratton Automation. Anthony will help us unpack what substation virtualization really means, the drivers behind it, and why this shift could transform how utilities manage their substations. Hey, hi, Anthony. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to have you here on the podcast. Hi, Mondana. Thank you for the invitation. Now, before we get started on this um, key conversation about substation virtualization, it would be great to know, Anthony, what your current role and responsibilities at Stratton are and what are the some of the areas that are of priority for you. So I'm working at Stratton Automation since 2014. I started as an engineer today and since few years, I am the managing director of Stratton Automation. So we are 20 people here in France, uh, close to Grenoble, and we are developing uh, software able to bring automation and communication in any electronic device. Great. And I know that you are very focused on substation virtualization right now, which is a huge buzzword in the industry. Utilities are very excited to learn more about this subject. So. Um, starting off with, how do you personally define substation virtualization? What are the parameters for it? Yeah, it's a good question because I think that not everyone watching this video is familiar with this concept, so it's important to talk about that indeed. Uh, first, it's important to say that a virtualized substation will not be a big computer managing uh, all functions a conventional substation has. So I want to make the analogy you know, with the cloud which is an older technology that more people know. When we first heard about our photos and documents hosted in uh, the cloud, even the logo was a uh, cloud, we might have thought, uh, how can data can be hosted in the cloud? <laughs> <laughs> but even if your documents are not on your PC anymore, these are always hosted on a physical device. So of course, there are things that cannot be virtualized. So in a substation, it's a measurement of a physical IOs, for example, you cannot virtualize the physical measurements, a circuit breaker, a transformer, you know, the, the hardware devices. But you can virtualize parts of the, the substation, like uh, alarming management, monitoring mm -hmm. and control automation, automatic decision making, overload management, uh, etc. You will probably ask me then <laughs> if these virtualized functions are still hosted on a physical device, why do we speak about virtualization? Mm -hmm. So if we want to focus on the essential thing, I think the most important is that those virtualized functions can be isolated with their environment, uh, operating system, software, libraries. It can be duplicated eventually and transferred from a device to another, from an industrial PC of vendor A to an IPC of a vendor B, for example. Mm -hmm. And that's why virtualization is very powerful, I think. It's not like if you buy a device to vendor A, and if it breaks, uh, you need to find a way to, to buy the exact same one, uh, which is, in the worst case, uh, not available anymore on the market. And here with uh, virtualization, you can have a high level of uh, independence. And, and what's driving the need for that? What, what's happening in the utility sector that is driving the need for virtualization? I could say again, a high level of uh, independence, knowing that uh, in the future, if something must be changed or simply updated, it will be possible. Specific functionality needs to be added to the system. You simply update the program on, or the software. You download the new version to the device and that's it. It runs right. again. Right. Second driver could be modernization. It's also a driver because we have old structures. We know that one day or another, it will not support every new system we are plugging to the grid. The wind farms, the solar farms, the, the solar panels on the roof of your, of your house, uh, electric vehicles. This is stressing the grid a lot. And 40 mm -hmm. years ago, I can imagine that we didn't think uh, about that. Also, driver is digitalization, of course. It's a third driver towards virtualization. There are new technologies helping to be able to prevent uh, power outage, uh, predict energy consumption, allowing to have a continuous supply of uh, electrical power, mm -hmm. but also new threats uh, like physical attacks or cyber attacks. 
So we need to support this, uh, this fast evolving ecosystem and be prepared uh, for the future. And maybe a last driver is probably, uh, or probably it's, it's for sure, it's, it's standardization. If we want to have the best reliable grid, everything and everyone needs to speak uh, the same language. Right, okay, so quite a lot of drivers. Uh, when I talk to utilities about substation virtualization, they're slightly concerned about the migration path. Uh, they imagine it will be fairly complex and costly. So how can you assure them that the migration path can be smooth if the right steps are taken? What are those steps, do you think? So, so there are uh, yeah, indeed uh, a lot of complexities. If I must choose three or four, uh, to, to be short, uh, I will say at first that uh, this is complex to get the knowledge about those new technologies and standards. Uh, technologies like uh, Docker, communication standards like IEC 61850, cybersecurity standards, etc. For some people in this domain, it's a classical stuff. But for young engineers, it's a, it's a lot to digest, I think. The validation time is also a big topic. It takes a while to test and validate everything. So the tools used for the project development must allow uh, easy ways of uh, simulating the, the process. It needs also a high level of flexibility. Many systems and architectures are different. Uh, as we said, there are a lot of new technologies every year, if it's not every month. So the tools chosen to support uh, virtualization needs to be really polyvalent, flexible, customizable, and easy to maintain. What's Stratton doing specifically to help utilities on their migration path? So Stratton is developed since 2002, so more than 20 years now. So it's a robust and reliable, and it can be integrated in any electronic device. So it's a fully mm -hmm. hardware independent, and it really brings intelligence into the device, allowing it to take automated decisions and to communicate with other devices or even with humans for its uh, HMI capabilities. So it's uh, an automation software in a broad sense. That's why I think it's a good choice to integrate it in a complex architecture. It supports uh, classical industrial protocols like Modbus, Profinet, as well as energy-related ones like the 850, client and server, 101, 104 for both sides too, the entry free master and outstation. And it's important to say also that uh, those are developed uh, internally by Straton Automation and by the Copa Data Group uh, we belong to. And another reason why Straton makes it easier when choosing to virtualize parts of a substation is that it's based on international standards. It's like in real life, in fact, uh, like if you were in a an international fair like uh, SGT, able to easily speak to everyone and not only in English. So, you know, like a standard voice. And uh, this communication is, is based on the, the standard we already mentioned before, like the 850, that we don't need to present anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and the, the programming is based on uh, IEC 611-3. It can be exported in 611-31-10. So, in addition to be hardware independent, we are also software independent. And this is a great advantage because do not depend on a specific manufacturer anymore. As well as the migration concerns, utilities also question whether in reality they're going to save money through virtualization. When should they expect to receive their ROI? Any thoughts on that? I guess it's a bit too early to, to have a, a specific timeline for a return of investment because this concept is pretty new, you know. All substations are from the 70s, and the recent digital substations like uh, the French TSO RT commissioned recently, and uh, a part of it being implemented with Stratton, by the way, right. are only a few years old. So I cannot predict a date for the return of investment, but what I am pretty sure is that utilities will really save money. Uh, I'm convinced that a virtual substation, at least what can be virtualized, can have an indefinite life. If you take a Windows PC and always make the updates, eventually you change some components, it can run for decades. And if one day the components are too old, you could simply take the image of your PC, duplicate it on a new one, and it will run again. And that's the concept uh, also behind virtualization is that you can transfer this image to, to another device and, and it makes it really, you know, living forever, being able to, to make updates on the fly. There is a new cybersecurity threat. You install the update and then that's it, it's fixed. So it's, it's, it can always evolve and you do not depend on, as said, vendor A or vendor B. So, 
So, so I'm sure it, utilities will save money. <laughs> Do you have any uh, great success stories um, so far? Utilities who've started on their virtualization uh, journey and already started to seeing some benefits. Yeah, so um, last year we presented at uh, SGT25 uh, a great success story with the French TSO uh, RT. Mm -hmm. who is the biggest TSO in Europe, and they implemented a part of their digital substation with Platon. The first digital substation has been released in 2023. Another one has been released recently, and uh, more will follow. It's really a great success. I think they are the first ones in Europe to, to have uh, this kind of overall system. It has been a, a long-term project, but they finally uh, managed to do it. And this is a great success. If you check for the airspace project, there are a lot of details and also in working groups for 850. This is really, really impressive and really nice. Great, great. We'll look forward to learning more about RT's experience at SGT26. And finally, Anton, um, the uh, workshop that you're going to be running at SGT26, delighted to have you on board as a sponsor. Um, and you'll be running a lunchtime workshop on substation virtualization. Tell us a bit about what you intend to share, what utilities can expect, how they should prepare to participate in the workshop. So we should present how to easily develop a part of a virtual substation and all of it with the Straton software. So it means that we will create an SCL file to configure an 850 IED. We will configure the 850 server create some specific uh, protection and control functions, I think, and make it run on a classical Windows PC. So it means that if you bring your PC with you, we can uh, we can install certain on it, and you will be able to transform your workstation, your PC, in a virtual circuit breaker, for example, uh, like a digital twin. And any uh, 850 external 850 client will be able to connect to your PC and see your PC as, a, as an IED, as a circuit breaker. I think people should attend because it's, uh, first it's quite, uh, it's quite interesting and there is a lot to learn and to discover. And I know that uh, visitors and exponents at uh, SGT are here for this reason, to, to, to learn and to talk about uh, this new technology stuff and discover new things. I think it will be really, really interesting and really, really good to join. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for uh, your support at SGT26 in Paris. We look forward to seeing you and your team there on site at the event next March. And thank you again for joining us today and sharing your insights with us. You're welcome. Thank you, Mandana. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. That was Anthony Burrell from Stratton Automation on the future of substation virtualization. Don't forget to subscribe to Powering the Future on YouTube, LinkedIn, or your favorite podcast platform. Check out our other episodes for more conversations shaping the grid of tomorrow. This is Powering the Future, a podcast series brought to you by Smart Grid Forums. One planet, one power grid.